Hey, hey everybody. I'm so glad you're here today. Type in where you are in the chat. I'm here with Jenny Miriam, one Hello. of my newest artists. Hi, Jenny. Hi. Where, Jenny, where do you live? I live in Bristol in the UK, and that's actually where Banksy, the famous graffiti artist, comes from. And if you walk around the city, you'll see his art around the walls here. And as I just told Jenny five minutes ago, I will be in Bristol in July for a little okay. event, by the way, that's a, I spilled the beans. Hope Beth doesn't yell at me, no, she won't. Um, and I will be there for a little event. We'll let you know in the newsletter on makeartthatsells.com newsletter, but also, so Jenny, it said that she would take me, show me around a little. We get some coffee. Looking forward to it. Because it's a really, really cool, cool, cool place, right? It's very Just creative. Stuff. Very creative. creative. Yeah. Uh, quite alternative. I think you'll love it. <laughs> That's me, creative and alternative, my two favorite words. I think you'll absolutely love it. I think so. Is anyone else from around there? Type in hello. Hi, everyone. From Germany and Aust Austria, Sweden, Mannheim, Chicago, Munich, Jerusalem, Italy, Tampa, Seattle, Portugal. Uh, let me introduce our guest today. Thank you again so much for being here. You're going to see her beautiful work and die. And also there'll be time for questions. I'm going to be asking her how she became a full-time illustrator and why. Um, what does she do if she gets discouraged? How does she get herself out of it because her work is so joyful how does she stay organized and she has three tips for uh, for uh artists so that's i'm looking forward to it jenny miriam is an illustrator based in the wonderfully creative city of bristol uk as a child she lived in the mysterious and magical county of cornwall and found true joy and artistic inspiration in the nature that surrounded her. You can see it in her work. From this inspired beginning, she went on to study art and design, graduating with a BA ONS. How do you say that? BA? BA ONS, that's it, yeah. That's how oh. I say it. Okay. Basically. In graphic and packaging design, mm -hmm. how many viewers were graphic or are graphic designers? I'm sure quite a few were or are graphic design and packaging, and then got an MA in multimedia. This led her to, to her career working as a digital, digital and graphic designer for 18 years, both in-house and freelance. During her time as a designer, she always felt most at home with illustrative work. Now getting cozy and illustrating with painty textures is her cup of tea. She, I love this part. She loves going undercover in sunglasses and people watching Japanese kawaii, retro children's books and illustration, miniatures, kitschiness, bric-a-brac shops, vintage ceramics and jewelry, handmade things, doing Reiki and meditating. I think we're related, by the way. <laughs> um, so first of all, look at her background. And I was like, yeah, we're related um, because look, this I got, um at a yard sale at the neighbor i love that russian doll i love that this i got in portland oregon with kelly ray roberts who knows kelly ray an illustrator we went oh, to um, i love this i love the buns on top look at this one the this bun. my artist flora waycott oh, gave lovely. to me she's half japanese half british Nice combo. This one I got at a vintage shop nearby, and I think um, it's, it's Swedish. Is this crazy? I love it's it's century it's Swedish. Yeah. Isn't that unbelievable? And Susie Altman gave me this one, Illustrator. So. Is that a vintage one? It? Yeah, and oh, it's wow. a pencil holder. That's so cool. That's so cool. I guess. Or may, oh. oh my god. I'm gonna put it right here actually. I put them on the mantle over there, but and then I have a whole 
shelf over there of wooden, the wooden things. Okay, so I have some questions for you. How did you become a full-time illustrator? How did you first make that decision? You know what? I'm going to go for my secure corporate job to this. Oh, wait a minute. Her clients. Clients include um, Mud Puppy, TJX Companies, Harper Collins, but listen to this, Glastonbury Festivals, Warner Brothers, Cartoon Network, Argman Animation, and Children's BBC, Island Records, Polydor, PlayStation, Universal Music, and, and Polydor. I assume that was for your multimedia career, correct? Yes, yeah. I was working in um, creative agencies and freelancing as well and working for those sort of clients. It was a lot of, it was a lot of fun. Um, wow. And what were you doing for them? Were you able to draw? Yes, I was um, doing a lot of illustrative projects and they oh. were the projects I loved the most. So the sort of projects that I um, would have absolutely loved doing um, would be like a viral game where I'd illustrate all the little characters and the scenery and everything. And then that would get passed to a developer or animator to work with. I also got to do some really cool sort of illustrative websites like Glastonbury Festivals. Um, and that was amazing to work on. Um, but I sort of found as the years went on, that sort of work for me kind of faded away a bit. Um, and I was sort of yearning for that creative kind of satisfaction that illustration gave me. Um, so about four years ago, I decided to just go for it. And I bought a load of art supplies and I began to practice in the evenings. I also bought myself a little Wacom pad and just whenever the children were in bed, um, I'd be practicing my art. Um, and in the mm. daytime, I was working full time as a designer. So now what made you decide I'm going to go buy art supplies like I'm really going to try this. That's a big shift one makes in one's mind. I was, just, I was just longing to do it again because a lot of my work had become about UX design, mm -hmm. uh, mobile responsive design, that sort of thing. And right. it wasn't really me, it was very technical. And I want to go sort of back to where my heart really was, which was illustration. Um, Did you see yeah. some illustrations and think, I, I'm hungering for that. Like, were you saying? Yes, I did. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I did. I, I saw, um, and I didn't know at the time, it was, it was sort of make art style type, type illustrations, but I didn't, I didn't know where to find that. So initially, um, I made a few pieces at home when I was practicing and I then signed up, I was looking for a course, I signed up to an MA in illustration. But that was totally the wrong thing for me because years before I'd already done an MA in multimedia and I'd learned at that academic level already and I wanted to put my energy into actual illustration. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I came off the MA um, in illustration and I started to hunt for the right course for me that would fit with um, having three children and also working nearly full time as a freelance designer. So, yeah. um, and that was when I found Make Art That Sells. <laughs> yes. And boy, when you showed up in there, wow, I fell in love with your work right away. It was absolutely gorgeous. So that's my e-course company where I teach. And um, it's wonderful because it's a way I can find artists, uh, discover artists. I, I don't know if I like the word discover because they existed before I saw them, um, but it, it's a way I, I, I find my artists now primarily. So you took a bunch of courses and you got into a lot of reviews. Which I, course were you in the, re oh, I know in toy course recently and what before that was it, what, what else did you take? It was um, illustrating children's books. Mm -hmm. um, and I also did the boot camp before um, mm. illustrating children's books, and it yeah. was just absolutely wonderful. It was just perfect for me, and it was so positive and uplifting as well. Um, I felt it really built my confidence doing that. Good. That's the goal because my feeling I know when I was an illustrator and before that, when I was an art student, 
when I felt seen and supported by a teacher or felt good, that's when I did my best work. You know, we all know those brutal critiques don't really do anything but kind of destroy us. So uh, that I was quite, I've always taught that way even before Make Art That Sells. I've always uh, believed that the more you nurture people, it's like children, you know? Children are so creative because we go, oh my God, I love that, that's so great. And we put it on the fridge, you know? And that's all we need to do with creative people. Okay, uh, what do you do? Are you ever discouraged? It feels like no, because your work's so joyful. But do you ever feel like, how can you tell other people viewers if they're feeling discouraged or not wanting to persevere or continue um um i would say um to just be kind to yourself because it just takes time um, and every time um you take put a pencil to paper or you pick up your tablet that's a step closer to where you want to be um so even if you uh, do something that you deem as not very good you're mm -hmm. actually making progress all the time because the not very good stuff is part of moving close to where you want to be, which is in illustration. I love that. Every time you pick up your pencil or, or your digital tablet, that's great. Okay, how do you stay organized? You've got projects, you've got three kids, you're working on all kinds of things. How do you stay organized? Do you, just, any tips? Just simple ways that other people would really. I just have um, a wall planner um, for all the family stuff because I've got three children and um, yeah, you have to keep on top of all the usual stuff, school stuff and that. And then for years, I've just used Dropbox for all my different clients. Um, and to be honest, the thing that I use the most really is I just make lists on a notepad with a pen. <laughs> I find that really easy. <laughs> And do you prioritize, do you know at any given moment what your priorities are for that day or the next yes, day? Yeah, always, yeah. I'm, I'm so, always, yeah. So like today, what were your priorities today besides be on an international webinar? Um, just house stuff, um, just organizing emails, um, making sure I've got everything I needed for today. Um, yeah, uh, it's just spinning plates really, isn't it? And just staying organized and on top of things. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, would you like to share your three tips with people? Okay, um, so my first tip is to be kind to yourself um, mm -hmm. and um, take a break because um, sometimes when I'm working, I get a little bit obsessive. And if I can't quite get something to hang together, I'll just, I've made the mistake before, of just sitting and sort of just going at it, you know, and you can waste time doing that. The best thing to do is just to take a break and just to walk outside or do something completely different. Um, and then you'll come back and you'll just know what to do straight away. So that's my first tip. Oh, so in other words, it, when you keep working, sometimes you're just spinning wheels, it's just going around, it's not yeah. getting better, and then you just get frustrated. Yeah, right. if is that, do I understand? If exactly. If it's not sort of flowing, there's no point in just sort of sitting there because you get frustrated and and it's not going anywhere and you can't you can't see the wood for the trees there and you're just trying to make I, something perfect in there. Yeah, I totally agree because the other thing too is you know I'm writing my book and um, I only write when I have great energy and I'm motivated which every day, and I write every single day, but as the day goes on, I, I get tired, I don't write. It's just, my attitude isn't gonna be there, my shininess, my brain, I'm not gonna be, it's just not gonna happen. And I don't get down on myself, it's just, you can't be productive at every moment of every day and you can't always have ideas. And I love how you said, take a walk, get outside. You're saying, change the scenery and also, get some movement, some exercise, some air, working out. Every time I work out, I know afterwards, I'm gonna have a good several hours mm -hmm. of productivity. It's just, mm -hmm. it's that simple. Okay, that's tip one. 
Tip number two, I'm taking notes too. Um, is if you're a very busy person that's got a full-time day job and you're desperate to move into illustration, but you don't know how, it's that this is a tip for this sort of person. And that's to use any little bits of time that you wouldn't think of. So you, you might take a sketch pad and pencil in um, and do it in your lunch hour and take a fat lunch in and then you don't have to go and buy a lunch or anything. And you've got a full hour then of sketching that you've done in a day or practice. You could do uh, Matt's mini assignments as well in that time. And of course, the evenings are always great as well to, to do your stuff in. Um, and you could do things even like, um, if you're a person that's lucky enough to go and sit in the hairdressers for a couple of hours, you could take, <laughs> you could take your sketch pad with you then. Just making use of those bits of time that you wouldn't normally think of. That, you know, I didn't know you were, you're like a time management genius. These are great. <laughs> well, I don't get to sit in the hairdressers though. <laughs> what? I don't get to sit in the hairdressers. Yeah. When I go, I bring a catalog and my hairdresser and I just talk about like the clothes and stuff. That's how I get away. But I think that's brilliant. Sometimes I bring, um, like, uh, if I need to edit something for maths or look at my artist's work, I might bring that. Okay, tip number three. Um, so tip number three is, um, um, when you're doing a maths course, um, if you're, a beginner I would sort of maybe just try and um, work in one medium first rather than mm -hmm. trying out lots of different things so trying because otherwise you find yourself trying to do too much at once so if you try and um, do watercolors as well as colored pencils and you're not familiar I'd maybe that was just me I'd stick to one to get the most out of it but that was just me me coming from my, the perspective of the path I took really well, I love that because it's enough having the challenge of the assignment. You don't want, oh, gee, I've never done gouache before. Why don't I try that? And now you're like, I'm trying to figure out gouache and I'm trying to do the assignment. So you're saying like, stay within your comfort zone enough because yeah. the assignment itself is out of your comfort zone, mm -hmm. right? So like mm -hmm. manage. Yeah. That's so wonderful. Yeah. Don't forget people put any questions in the Q&A, press that Q&A button. Um, Laura Carrillo would love to know what mediums that you work with, that you work with. Um, sometimes I've uh, painted, painted little figures and stuff and taken a photo and then I work over the top of it, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Or um, I tend to work, mostly just work in Procreate really, but I've set it up. So for me, it feels as much like um, I'm using paint and paper as much as possible. Um, I've spent a lot of time tweaking and, you know, testing out things and just getting it just how I like it, my sort of setup. So I would say Procreate and um, uh, brushes like gouache brushes. And yeah. I've got a massive library of brushes that I sort of uh, flip between sometimes. I've got a few favorites though as well. I'm sure everybody wants to know what are your brushes. They every time the viewers ask the person, the artist, what brushes do you care to yeah. share? Um, there's, um, there's, I did have a look, but I, there are a lot of them aren't haven't got the sort of original folders that they were in. So there's mm -hmm. one called Gouache Twenty Eight, but I don't know where I got it from. I have seen Bardet brushes. There's some of hers that I really like. Who is um, that? Bardet brushes. It's a lady that's um she does yeah. like tutorials and stuff like that, and she's got sells lots of brushes. Oh, Bardot brushes. Thank you, Lydia. Yeah, I've seen the students talk about that. I gotta get um, my head together. Yeah. She has one called Painty Round. Um, and then I've got one called AJ Painterly, but I've got no idea where, where I got it from because I've got hundreds and that's, I like it because it's quite a messy kind of brush. Mm. Oh, that's, that's great. Ones. Um, do any of you in the chat use these? Raquel says Vivi brushes. This is great. I wish I were an affiliate for Procreate because all my, like most of my artists use Procreate, I'd be like, a, you know, it's fine. I don't need to. Okay. 
So let us take a look at her work. There will be a giveaway at the end, a little guessing game. And are you giving something away, Jenny? I am actually. Can you show the, us? This is over here. Should I pick it up? Yes, I love that. There you go. This is my mm. lucky name moon print. It's beautiful. And it's on um, some really nice art paper it's been printed on. Mm. How did you get that printed up? Um, there's a company that I found called D Studio. Um, I did a, quite a bit of research because, because I'm going to open a Etsy shop as well. Um, oh, that's great. Yeah, I, I liked that they were sort of, um, you know, very sort of arty into their art papers rather than using something like, I looked into Printful, but I didn't know, mm. I wasn't sure about that. Oh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I can't wait till you show me around Bristol or Bath. Oh my God, it's just going to be. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, just any little quirky shops or an art store or bookstore. Yeah. I'm happy as a clam. Clothes, always good. I bought this for my England trip because it feels William Morrissey. Like, yeah, it looks a bit William Morris. Yeah, I and like it. I've, it's really long too. It's a really long dress and I feel like I'm a British vintage sofa in it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to bring an umbrella, though. I'll, I'll lend you some welly boots because that's what the weather is like here. It's very unpredictable. In July? Oh, yes. It's, that's um, rain season in, in the UK. <laughs> oh, no. how cold is it? It's not cold. It's normally just a bit rainy. Uh, that's so like, weather. But, but like sleeves. You might get lucky. No, it's normally pretty warm, but uh, yeah, you just want to bring, make sure you've got welly sandy. <laughs> I, I, I have sweaters. Is that too warm? Cardigans are good. Cardigans are good. Yeah. Sorry, I was looking at the chat. It's making me smile. <laughs> yeah, she, I know her accent's great. Okay, now we'll screen share. So here we go. Here we go. Get ready to flip out at the beauty. Don't forget, you can put questions in the Q&A at the bottom. So here we go. I mean, look at this, people. Tell us about this. This is extraordinary. This is what an agent loves. And I'm, I asked you a question. Now I'm interrupting you already before you okay. can even answer. But I'll tell you what we love. The characters, it's picture book ready. I mean, animals, a child, poses, expressions. The patterns on the clothing, she gives 110%. You can see her joy. You can see how her talk about her self-kindness and all that comes in. There's a gentleness, a warmth. Um, look at, I mean, I, I've i seen this piece before, obviously. I'm her agent, but I'm just, there's more new things every, look at this sandwich. I'm dying. You know, this this hunk of wood, the wood grain, this lady with her shoes, you know, she's a little older. She's got gloves and her teacup. I mean, uh, it's crazy. This poor, poor, that's a hedgehog, porcupine. It's a hedgehog. hedgehog yeah. Hedgehog porcupine. <laughs> yeah. The wings, the lollipops, the folklore clothing. And then the, the typography, the lettering is so well executed, yet it's obviously hand painted and it's legible. That's what you want to show. Beautiful. Okay, now tell us how, why or how or what. Tell us a little about this. Well, I was actually um, making elements for a large mm -hmm. piece, a, a big puzzle. And um, I knew that Folktale Week was happening on Instagram. So um, I decided to sort of combine the two because I, you know, I knew it was going to take me a long time to do the puzzle. So I used this as just my sort of opening piece as kind of like I'm joining Folktale Week, which is absolutely brilliant, by the way, on Instagram. And thank you to the people that organise it. It's, it's excellent. Jennifer Potter's one of them, isn't she? Um, uh, Kellyanne Dalton reviewed my work as well, but um, I think that was something connected with Folktale Week. I can't remember, but thank you, Kelly. <laughs> oh, yeah, Kellyanne Dalton, that's wonderful. Okay. 
than this one. Why did you make this? What did it tell us about this? So this was also for Folktale Week um, and it was for a moon prompt. Um, and I just want to do something really magical um, and sort of fairy tale like. Um, I love sort of, you know, it's got slightly kitschy, slightly, slightly vintagey, but I really like the idea of the moon kind of like <clears throat> watching over this little name on her journey. Um, and I like wanted to create a feeling of sort of safety and comfort um, in it as well, in a sense, this kind of etheric presence in the background, just kind of watching over her and she doesn't realise it mm. <laughs> as she goes on her sort of journey across the dark water. I wouldn't let my children go on a lily pad at night, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's well lit for night, so that's, that's maybe okay. I mean, so she's talked about some of her references, vintage, and so forth, and how that informs her work you know when for writers they say read 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 for artists look 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 collect either in real life or in pinterest or somewhere and and constantly be looking at things when you walk down the street take photos of things the more you follow your influences like i love mid-century Italian painting that's very non-objective. I love it. And it influenced my work, which is very, you know, my blobbies and things like that. You wanna be really tuned in. It's gonna inform your work. Okay, I'm going crazy. <laughs> Tell us about this. So I did this around sort of Mother's Day time, um, but it's not just for Mother's Day. I thought it was sort of a badger celebration type thing but I love um when I was a child I used to absolutely love and I still do staring at detail on images and stuff and little stories within stories mm -hmm. um so you've got this sort of little badgers set and um there's some little stories going on within it like um the son has bought his mum some breakfast and they're sort of like looking lovingly at each other and then you've got the dad absolutely out of it um, right. <laughs> and um, you can read into it whatever sort of story that you want to um, about him being asleep he might be being a bit sort of lazy or ignorant but the intention was actually um, that he'd been asleep all night tending to the baby and um, the irony is that he, before he went to sleep he was reading a baby sleep guide and it hasn't worked for him <laughs> so that, that was the little story behind it really <sighs> But look at this solar is lighting up their little like that's just extra you know look the little guy with the car the gifts so you tell that it's mother's day if we look closely it doesn't have to shout uh look at this earthworm on the side what is this like an old buried vintage key that's like yeah. in the dirt yeah a little bit of mystery as to what it's for mm, mystery and then bringing breakfast. And what she does is the background is a little more subdued, a little more muted. So she's controlling the focal points, which is the scene. Beautiful. I mean, the bedspread. I want all of it. <laughs> the daffodils. I want all of it. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, I love that. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Tell us. Um, this was just another section of um, the puzzle I was working on, but I used it for the Folktale Week prompt, mm -hmm. which was feast. So I did a mouse picnic feast. And um, yeah, I love, again, just putting in like little details and um, the characters busy, like this naughty little mouse tucking into the cupcake on the right hand side. And the dandy in the middle, just kind of chilling, eating his cheese. Um, yeah. I also love drawing packaging as well and typography on packaging. I'd, I'd like to do some more of that actually, I think. Beautiful. Yeah, just show more lettering. This mm. is beautiful. How she's done sort of a branded logo um, would inspire a packager to commission her. I always say show the kind of work you want to get. And she's obviously perfect for children's books, but this introduces another market. Oh my God. Oh my God, tell us. 
talk to us about this? So this is all the piece, that, all the elements of the puzzle put together, plus some more. Um, I just want to make a really interesting puzzle for a child, um, a woodland creature theme, obviously. Um, just lots and lots of detail in there for a child to really stare at and take in all the different sort of interactions, all the different food, um, people being kind to each other, apart from the hedgehog feeding the worm to the magpie. I guess that's not very kind to the worm. But... <laughs> Down here. Yeah, well, um, at least you don't you, you don't anthropomorphize the worm, so it more looks yeah, exactly. more I, like I a shape. A little, a no face. <laughs> yeah, you didn't put a face of clothing. Look at this. This this to me is just the most wonderful. Um, I want I want to do this puzzle. So let's be sure that the client sends me one. Uh, I I must. Oh, how beautiful! I'm looking forward to seeing it. Um, mm -hmm. It's been made now, so I'm excited about that. Hi, Greg. Greg is here. He says, Hi, I, would want the, I would want this picnic as a puzzle, a memory game with characters and food, as a plush set, like stuffed animals, as a game, as kids' home decor, as dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Thank you, Greg. It's Thank you. And she's really lovely as well. She will get all that and more and things she doesn't even know about. Okay, this is a little different color palette, a little different kind of narrative. Tell us about this. What inspired it? Again, this was for Folktale Week and this is for the dream prompt. Um, and I just wanted something really whimsical and um, romantic, uh, still sort of folk tale, um, you know, fairy tale type thing. Mm -hmm. But he's just having a lovely dream. And he's just dreaming of love, basically, and um, I want to get sort of a bit of um, symmetrical kind of folk art in there as well. Um, and that's, yeah, and a nice sort of patterned bedspread. I enjoyed doing that. Yeah, and, and this could inspire a client to, like, you know, before we went live, I talked to you, I really want to see a home decor collection, a bunch of them. Um, so we can pitch to anthropology our, our, our people there. So uh, this, this um, could be easily turned into something. And this too, very beautiful in some way or another. Look at how she renders the fur. So look carefully. She's got several colors in short strokes that go in the direction of the shape of the animal. Who's watching great... British Pottery Throwdown when they had this graffito week. My husband and I watch it. We're already sad that the season's almost over. Um, and and how they uh, do graffito to carve the lines to show the animals. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Talk to us about this. Um, so this was a piece for Lilla's Menagerie, which is sort of it's a sort of online trade show, isn't it? Mm -hmm. so, um, yes, I, exactly. Um, and artists are invite, invited to um, contribute to it. And we were given certain themes and colour palettes to work with. Um, Which Susan and Kim gave this year. I was very mm -hmm. excited about that. Agent Susan, Agent Kim, who were agents at my agency. Um, and it was, it was brilliant. They were lovely palettes and to, to work with and stuff. And um, this was for the sort of mystical mermaid theme. Um, and I had a few different tries at different, using different, the different color palettes together, but I chose this one in the end with a kind of muted -y, um background. Pinky was pops, bright pops in the end. Worked the best for this piece. Um, yeah. Did you, did you get reference for like, th this shell is, is not something I would just think up. You know, it looks like you got reference and ideas for these various creatures yeah i normally um with something like that i'll always try to find um a, a good photo to start with and then you just work sort of stylizing it don't you um, yeah and then you've got the sort of original reference in that sense to work with um I don't reference other people's illustrations. I get inspired by them, but I don't reference because sometimes it won't be correct. You know, it, you want to go straight to the source of it, don't you really? That's right. And that way you're not going to be as influenced. And then mm -hmm. like, 
no, that looks like that person. And then you're stuck and your, your brain can't, you know, like while I'm writing my book, I'm not reading um, other books. I'm reading books about writing. Um, but, and when you're making a piece, you might want to not look at other people's art, but as Jenny says, get photo reference. So when she does this puff, puffer fish, she, she get, has some interesting detail to include in the design of her character. So she designs these, it's what I call design drawing as opposed to, <clears throat> which is relatively recent for many for most, for a long time, most art was representational. And then um, it became uh, where you were more able to do design drawing. Maybe it's just been 50 years, I'm thinking. I'm not a, an art history expert, but just in what I've been seeing. And, uh, but when you use reference, you're going to have more interesting information in your piece, more interesting shapes. And, and look at this. Crazy. Yeah, we went nuts over this at the studio. We just were like, we had just taken you on, I think, right? And you did this. Yeah. Yeah. And we're like, <laughs> we were just like, okay, we won the lottery with this. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go tell us about this. Why did you make it? How did you get ideas for all these patterns? Um, again, this was for the menagerie. Um, mm -hmm. And um, one of the themes was kind of uh, patterned ladies sat in their sort of patterned interiors, uh, Susan suggested. Mm. And I picked out a colour palette and sort of worked with it and added pops of colour. Um, but I just wanted to have the lady just really looking very comfortable in herself, quietly confident. Um, I called it the divine feminine, actually, because it's that subtle sort of strong energy where she's just kind of, this is me. And she's feeling good about herself and she's nice and comfortable in her beautiful sort of spiritual surroundings as well. I think, I think she, um, I kind of look like her, not really. Oh yes, I couldn't tell the difference. I know. <laughs> we look identical, except I look younger and my hair's straighter, just kidding. I was thinking. But um, yeah, I, I want that dress again you give so much and you create a mood you know how she has this point a pyramid terrarium and a shell and a cactus and these mystical pieces and the moon and and she's got this around her neck and the and the henna on her feet and the flowers this the nude sculpture the crystal the fortune uh, the, the the crystal ball this wonderful vintage lamp. Uh, this is sort of feels like a bit of um, indie, Indian. What is that with like the Brits got all that Indian reprint? Henna, henna kind of pattern. I think I looked at henna patterns and stuff. Um, um, no, funny. block printing. Yeah, like the block. I have some of those block, those hand carved blocks from India beautiful okay so here we have the mermaids but their children and you've all you've amped up the colors tell us about this what was this for well, my my daughter's actually said um why don't you draw some rainbow mermaids <laughs> and that's why I did it and and <laughs> and Susan became agent here is always saying I know I say this but we need mermaids we need rainbows, you know, that's what people want in a cool, cool way, which you've done. So I just want to get some really bright colors in. And I, one of my favorite things is um, to see dark skin tones against like really bright hair and clothes. I think for me, that's quite aesthetically sort of pleasing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I just want to get some really nice bright punchy colors in there. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Tell us about this amazing. Um, so this was for um, the menagerie again, um, and a theme was camping. And I went with sort of glamping um, kind of editorial at the top there. And I just wanted to um, 
illustrate some really sort of bright, um, nice, light, airy sort of cool, a cool sort of feeling, you know. Um, and you've got sort of a vintagey record player there and um, a wine dispenser. I actually really want that wine dispenser myself. It's, it's quite good. And um, down the bottom here, um, I did some glamping dogs as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and each dog is different. Yeah, um, I just, I was on Etsy and I noticed people were making these really sweet little sunshades for dogs. Um, so I thought I'd just put a few doggies in sunshades and teepees, really. It's wonderful. And, um, oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, that's right. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> this is so, so beautiful. And it's a little more rendered little more shaded is that true a little bit yeah a little um, bit yeah this was um a sample for um a client and but the book just didn't happen in the end um they were they i think it went in a completely different direction or topic or whatever big so mistake was... <laughs> they will regret it it's like the people who passed on uh jk rowling right you know <laughs> this is beautiful um, that's so, all right. Oh, no, no, that's okay. Um, mm -hmm. I just made the pieces. I took the babies and just made them into seasonal babies because I, I liked the little children. So mm -hmm. um, I just made them, put them across different seasons, basically. Yeah. I love doing this. It's beautiful. And I love that you're not just changing the skin tone, but you're changing, the, you're doing a variety of features two that represent different ethnicities mm -hmm. um so well done mm -hmm. really well done and the richness of every skin tone you know i always say with with brown you have such an opportunity to show very rich colors with a, a paler skin tone you can show a, a warmth in the cheek and here, this orange on this color is really spectacular. It's all very beautiful. I love her, how her hair, this, what do you, like where it's really like thin and fine and almost the a hairline. blur. The hairline. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you. Okay. So tell us about this. I know what so, this was for. Uh, this was another piece for the menagerie again. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, um, names, I think names were mentioned. So I just decided to draw a bunch of sort of quite vintagey but fresh names. And gnomes. I also, in American, she's saying gnomes. Gnomes. <laughs> <laughs> Translating. And um, also, I just wanted to do some different names because normally it's um, a little old man with a long white beard. So I just thought I'll just put some different sort of names in there rather than the usual type of thing. And it works perfectly with your highly decorative style and vintage. It's beautiful. Thank you. I'm to get, you know, everybody's probably getting tired of me saying it's beautiful. I love it. I'm going to die. It's beautiful, but it's true. This was an earlier piece and this one Natasha animated, which was so wonderful. I, I, this was earlier and I loved it because showing people doing things, adults doing things, uh, is really wonderful for editorial work, for um, adult nonfiction or fiction book covers, uh, and so forth. So I was really pleased to see this. The more you show a range in your work that you're comfortable in, you know, if you don't want to do a certain kind of thing, you don't have to, but even within your, uh, uh, this is certainly great for picture book because you're going to have adults in a picture book, but it also broadens her range of what she can do. Yeah, Greg says, your layout sk skills are one of your many superpowers. Thank you for pointing Thank that you. out. It's really true. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think this actually got used in the end on gift bags actually in the end, which mm. is quite exciting. Um, Fabulous. But I just um, did it as a, you know, uh, community gardens I, I just noticed there was a group of people working together and they were all so happy and smiling and 
it was just a nice scene so I just went away with it in my mind and sort of did my own version of it and um I yeah. love um, the lady in I think the lady in the top left is my favorite because I like the way she's looking at the lady in the wheelbarrow who's breastfeeding and she's it's kind of a bit of a nurturing kind of oh I remember doing that and just smiling that kind of vibe you know so what you're saying and everybody please hear what she's basically saying she creates a narrative her own story it's not obvious i never saw that really before that's okay what it does is it infuses her characters with personality with a backstory she's giving backstory to her art and when she has that like when she did her she's like you know her hair in these little buns and the sneakers and her clothing tell us the backstory on this one is there one a backstory who is she not, not really i just sort of designed her really um you know you just notice people on the street don't you and fashion and what people are wearing i probably saw somebody at some point wearing dungarees with a polka dot top underneath and thought oh and it, it went in there <laughs> went in there okay so she doesn't always have a backstory um, you know, point taken, but <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh my god, I'm just tell us about this. Um, this is for class children's um ICB um, illustrating children's book class for Make Art That Sells. And um, I just wanted to um, you know, show sort of the relationship between them, really, sort of the curiosity and. Uh, love and just have this really bright monkey on a sort of quite muted background um, mm -hmm. and I was just trying to sort of get into the poses a bit more here um, and yeah it's a lovely project to work on they're all so good the courses absolutely brilliant. thank you thank you um, Zoe always talks about poses <sighs> Ooh, excuse me Bless my co-teacher Zoe Tucker is an art director of picture books and also a picture book writer has always stressed the importance of active poses and early on we've been teaching it for like what i don't know six seven years i was like why is it so like can't you just have static people like why does it always have to be so exaggerated in the, the poses like like this and i came to understand it's because little two-year-olds that are being read to can read and understand a physical pose. They may not understand the words like I was scared or I was surprised or the, the girl was you know, happy, but they read the poses and expressions. It's one of the first ways children and babies learn to communicate obviously through the eyes and facial expressions. And also it's more similar to animation, which uh, kids are, are so exposed to more than ever. So they want a more animated character. Tell us about this. Well, this was just um, the double page spread. Um, and I just wanted to try um, a more challenging perspective, um, mm -hmm. you know, doing a bit of foreshortening. And obviously you've got the naughty little monkey up in the tree um, <laughs> eating. <laughs> And she's trying to get him down with monkey nuts. And it, that's actually something I'm, I do with my children, try and coax them down with sweets out of trees <laughs> and goodies to try and get them to climb down from the tree. No, wow, no. really? Is that true? Yeah. But oh. they, they climb up trees sometimes and I, have, I say, come down and you can have a lollipop. <laughs> oh, wow. So she's trying to get him down with monkey nuts. But, you know, I, I just wanted to practice really the perspective. Um, that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, I mean, the perspective, the foreshortening is extraordinary and how there's such a sense of depth and distance between this and this, this in the foreground, so huge and right up front on the branch and then background of the bike. It's wonderful. Thank you. Oop. And there we go. This was for the Make Art to Sales class to do the book cover and this story oh i wrote this one yes you did yeah <laughs> jamila and title <laughs> it was jamila title the turtle um was the original title jamila and title the turtle but oh, right. um, yeah but they said that i'd already given a turtle assignment a few years back so it was title the tamarin 
or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. that's what it was. And this is just me getting the sort of cover and trying to get, you know, the, the, the characters up big in the middle so you can see sort of what it's about because it's about the sort of relationship between them really, isn't it? So mm -hmm. that's just what I'm trying to show on the cover. Mm -hmm. When to show texture, it's all about what's on the edge. So the texture of her hair shows the curl and the softness. And here with a little bit of, of uh, the, the hairs going shows us the, that it's fur, as you see. And skin is smooth, so it's a clean line. Okay. I'm gonna save a little time for questions and the giveaway at the end, do stay for the end for the giveaway of Jenny Miriam's beautiful um, art print. This is fabulous. Um, this was for, so I won a place on the toy pitch course um, and the assignment set was, um, it was a theme, um, cats on tour in Barcelona, just to illustrate some icons. Mm -hmm. um, and I entered the competition and um, I was just so over the moon um, that I won the place on the toy pitch course because I just had the most fantastic time. It was just magical. And this was Riley's assignment. And my co-teacher, who's a, a toy inventor, game and toy inventor, Riley Wilkinson, and also an agent at the studio. And uh, he just has the most inventive mind. So tell again what the assignment was. It was um, Cats on Tour in Barcelona. Um, <laughs> It was just so much fun and um, I sort of added in, um, I did a bit of research and I saw some really kitschy postcards that said things like I've got my paella in Barcelona and I just wanted to add in some little fun elements like her taking a selfie and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I loved doing this, it was brilliant. That's great. Where, where is she taking a selfie? What am I missing? Where am I if, you, if you go up the top and um, the pink cat in the middle with her pink She's got a selfie stick. Oh, the <laughs> selfie stick. Oh, yeah. That's great. That is great. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, this, I think this is when we as a team decided to represent you. You yeah. did this for the first week in the toy class. The first week. And we're people in the chat, do you remember this one? And it was like, wait a minute, how how did you translate your style to a toy how did you do it so quickly in a week and also like it's a fabulous toy idea playset bento playset um it was um it was just same so, so much fun to do um and uh, yeah the theme was um children's pretend play with food mm -hmm. and i i absolutely love um sort of Japanese stuff and bento boxes and things like that. So I thought I'd just do a stacking sort of bent style bento box. Mm -hmm. um, and um, with sort of something completely different on each layer. So you've got um, on the bottom layer, you can um, put your little bandana on and um, you've got some cooking utensils <clears throat> and you've got a handle as well that clicks onto the wok above. Um, and then it's kind of different sensory things, really. Um, but the one that I, the idea that I enjoyed thinking of the most was the extending um, chopsticks on the left hand side. Um, <laughs> so so they would fit in here. Yeah, and they've got magnets, um, repelling magnets. You know when you put magnets together, mm -hmm. I can't think what it's called, but they repel each other. So you chase after the little. Um, magnetic candy and it will naturally just move away as it's running away. Wow. That's a game in and of itself. That's pretty fabulous. Great. And yeah. And then you did this, I think week two or three or something. And it was, it's just extraordinary. And, and like Greg Vineyard in the chat says her composition, how she designs a page is so beautiful. It's so much on a grid, you know, a grid, but then with a, with the wonk not following rigidly. So in other words, she's got you know this and this, this column, this is a column, this along the bottom, this is a column here. You know, it's not a perfect column. It's like this, but but there's structure and order behind it. Yeah, 
What's your astrological sign? Are you Capricorn? I'm Leo, actually. Oh, okay. Um, beautiful. Yeah, this was really quirky, really eccentric characters. I think this was the one where you just did, did the, you thought your rain assignment, I think. Yeah, the mashup at the end. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Oh, it was so yeah. much fun. I love doing it. And then this was another one you did and for the toy class. Yeah, I loved just... doing research for that. It was really good fun. What, how did you do research? What did you do? Did you Google a particular topic? Yeah, San Francisco in the 1960s and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And just looking at all the sort of shops that were there, um, music kind of shops, record shops and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was um, really good fun doing this. Uh, and obviously you can just pick a little record, click it on and it plays that tune. And then the large turntable turns round and the figures spin. Mm -hmm. So it's a little play set. But I think in reality, you wouldn't be able to use those, the doors, you'd have to, you'd have to pretend <laughs> bands because of copyright and stuff. <laughs> oh, true. Yeah, that's right. Well, whatever the client will figure that out. Very muted, very gorgeous. Let's hear about this one. You know what? I'm going to zip through mm -hmm. because we're almost, time's almost up and we want to get to the giveaway. But I mean, just crazy. I was so glad to see this your muted colors, your variety of people, and this contemporary street scene. So she's able to do magical, otherworldly, but also um, contemporary street scene. Yeah, wonderful colors again. I was really pleased to see this before I took her on because it showed me that she had range and a capability to do any colorway. Again, the great poses and expressions, this was my story, I Paint Purple, about a girl who will only use purple colors and is obsessed. And her mother tries to get her to use other colors. At the end, no, she doesn't, she stays with purple. Mm -hmm. And she's happy, beautiful cookbook, all the foods, unbelievable. You love cultures different from your own. You love time periods different from your own. And that's what keeps you amused, entertained, interested, fascinated. And it comes through. This is beautiful. Yeah, I went, I, this was for class. Mm -hmm. And just how you did the stone wall and this little village, a child would just could imagine, well, the the pants here but the child can just imagine this world look at this with a picture book you want to show things that the parent and the child can look at for many many readings so they don't get bored beautiful it looks like it, it's the whole piece looks ed edible <laughs> i love this this was a very different look for you very mystical um, and obviously very book cover. <laughs> and there we have Thank it. You. Oh, how great. Couple of quick questions from the viewers. And then thank you so much for sharing thank your you. beauty with us. I'm just like, I'm gonna have really good dreams tonight, I'm sure. Thank you. Um, so thank you, let's, everyone. yeah, um, let's see um so we have a question by christina rodriguez hi jenny how do you go about setting up your compositions do you do characters first and then the scenes or vice versa um sometimes christina i'll just um sort of sketch the whole thing out um as a sort of scene but usually it, it changes a bit um and then other times I'll sort of create them all as sort of icons or spot illustrations and then sort of put it all to piece it all together. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, yes, don't forget the giveaway. Oh, I have my alarm going off. The next question is, um, a Vandela Vrensk asks, what other illustrators inspire Jenny? Okay, um, I love vintage illustrators. Um, 
like um, Richard Scarry. Um, I don't know if everyone know, knows who that is. Yeah. Um, I love all sorts of illustrators that I see on Instagram as well. Um, I love, there's an illustrator called Monica Forsberg. I think her work's beautiful. Um, mm. Felicitas Sala as well, absolutely stunning. Really sort of quirky and a bit alternative. Um, and just I, Gustav Klimt, I can't say it. Oh, that's Gustav it. Gustav Klimt, Gustav. is that it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love his work because it was just so decorative and mm. just timeless. It's so pretty and beautiful, a lot of it. Yeah. It's wonderful. Okay. Um, Ginger asks, are some of the quirky details you include in paintings things you'd drawn before, or do you research and dream up everything new for each piece? Um, the last one, really, to be honest. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I just kind of, it just, I meditate a lot, and I get, I do get a lot of ideas when I've meditated as well, or when I wake up in the night and stuff, or in the morning, I sort of have little ideas then. Um, yeah. Just walking around as well, I, I sort of think of stuff. Um, yeah. I'm really glad to hear that you meditate a lot. I think that's essential. It's so important because you tune into who you are more deeply as you mm -hmm. meditate and you calm the mind, you focus the mind, and that's where you channel the great ideas too. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important to get your sort of the gestalt of the piece before you sit down and do it. You have like, yeah, I want lots of blues or I want to just show this sort of dreamy bridge that goes here or like some point of view some purpose some something you're excited about to begin with Does, is that something you resonate with yeah absolutely yeah I just get that sort of vibe and I'll sort of get the you get the image in your head don't you and then yeah. um, you sort of the energy of it and then you sort of just work with it, it seems to just come out on the paper then I agree if you're in, that, in the flow of it feeling like I agree well, there are more questions, but we're going to move on to the giveaway. Do you want to show uh, what they win again? It is an art print of my uh, lucky name moon. Mm, I'm sure it has magical powers too. Okay, so for those of you who haven't been uh, experienced one of our giveaways before, we are going to name uh, the the category or the question. You can type in as many answers as you want, as often as you want. Uh, Kim, who's in the background, and Jenny and I will look to see if we find one. They, they come very quickly. There can be repeats, so we don't. <laughs> Horses Eiffel Tower magazines out too early. We, um, it, you may have guessed it before the person we see, but it's, it's who we see first. We, you get what you get, you don't get upset, and it's, it's just luck. So there you go. Okay, the question is, Jenny's favorite color combo, two colors, go, two colors. Oh, there it is. Yeah, Sinia Gabrielle, pink and orange. Boom. <laughs> Yay, so Sinya, if that's how you say it, write to, should they email you directly? Yes, they can email me directly or on Instagram as well. Um, do you want my email address? Whatever you want to give out. Email me and, um, and I'll forward it along to okay. you. So okay. if you want to email Kim, K-I-M, at lillarogers.com, I'll organize it. That's Thank great. you. Thank you. Yay. Thank you everyone so much for being here. Don't forget we have our giant spring sale for my courses, which ends in a few days. It's the best prices you're going to get on the remainder of the classes. And you see how it rocket ship Jenny's career to this incredible situation where she's represented by us and gets work and support and all that. And they really helped her, which pleases me no end. So do go to makeartthatsells.com and read all the course descriptions and the testimonials and all the goodness and, and the class schedules are on there, I believe. And 
and then you can go ahead and do sign up their bundles that include a bunch of different courses and those are even more deeply discounted so I hope I see you in class because I love to teach. I love to help creative people thrive and have wonderful, prosperous lives as they deserve. So thank you so much, Jenny, for taking the time to be thank with you me Thank you very, today. very much. Thank you for everyone. And thank you, Lilla. My pleasure. Thank my pleasure. Thanks, everyone. Bye.